Welcome guys, my name is Jesse Humber and I'm making this video with um, Shane Springbett and we're going to kind of walk you guys through how to use a camera system that I developed with my graduate professor, Kurt Onthink, and an individual, Cressmer Williams, at NOAA. So here in front of me is the actual camera system. So it's composed of three battery packs. So there's one, two, and three. And then this is the computer component of it. So up on top here, we have a custom PCB. And this basically just runs a strobe system. And then down below, we have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and that runs a camera system. So this whole system works as a kind of motion detecting trigger camera, and it's made for deep water deployments. When you're trying to load on all these battery packs and then using these nuts to secure everything, I took a Dremel and I put a fuzzy head on it, like a polishing head, and then I would just use that Dremel tip, I would hold it next to this, and it would just spin these like all the way down these rods. So you can very quickly load these up with bolts and like move them up and down this kind of framework by just using a Dremel with a soft tip. Notice the end doesn't have any actual nuts. And that's because this is threaded. So in order to screw these into the end of this housing, you need to be able to twist each rod individually. I take the very back of the setup and I loosen all of these bolts and then very gently I take a power drill and I actually clamp the end of the drill onto one of these bolts and I spin it really slowly and that whole rod will spin in all these housings and it'll thread it into this end component and it'll suck everything together and then I just kind of space everything out until it's all nice and situated This housing is made out of Schedule 80 PVC, and we use union joints um, right here, here, and here. And the union joints basically press a like lens. Um, so in this sense, we use glass or plexiglass, depending on the lens port. And we can take these plates out. Once this is screwed down, this, this union joint, it actually presses this glass plate against an O-ring might be a little difficult to see, but it sits right here. And that O-ring is what makes this watertight. So this port right here is the one that, that utilizes the camera. And this port here is the one that utilizes UV. So now that we've seen the camera system and just kind of generally how this housing works, we'll look at how the computer actually fits inside the housing. So it's pretty straightforward, but basically you remove this union joint at the end, and we use plexiglass on the end so it's nice and transparent. You're able to see our little monochrome OLED screen on the end of the computer here. So this entire system then will slide inside this housing and it's a little bit tight. And the reason for that is we don't want it shifting around while it's in transport. So to get it to move in smoothly, sometimes I twist it a little bit so it slides in nicely. And now you can see it's fully inside the housing. We can take our plexiglass, pop it back over the front, and shut our union joint. Each of these like inter areas between batteries has been taped and I'll, I'll open one up here. So I'll open this one up to show you just kind of what that looks like. 
and why I'm taping it. So this is as the camera would look ready for deployment. So I'll take off this tape. And here's our Molex connector. So if I pull this Molex connector out, you can see this, this aspect here is where it connects to the battery. And I'll just pop it open here. Oop, this is the female receptacle and the male. The male is dir connected directly to the battery. And the female runs in this wiring harness all the way down to this main output, which connects to the battery. There's two other components that get wired into this. So every time you unload and load the camera system, if you look at how this is mounted in here like that, the actual ribbon cable from the camera travels up, down, and then into this ribbon cable mount for the Raspberry Pi. And the secondary, the LED that sits here, is wired directly off of this wiring harness, sorry. So the wires are tucked down inside there and they come out, they extend down, and then they connect to this LED. And that's this camera just got back from a deployment, so I'm gonna disassemble it like I would kind of in the field and get ready to charge the camera system. Initially taking this apart, I took off my um, union joint and my plexiglass that kind of covers this port. And now I'm ready to pull this whole system out. Now I'm able to remove this ribbon cable. So it pops right off the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And now as I pull this out, my camera is no longer connected. And then I just tape it against my my housing just like that. So it's nice and out of the way. And if I spin it around here, you can see the ribbon cable is just kind of flat against the roof of the housing. I wanna make sure that it's kind of at an angle. So neither one of these bolts, kind of the high parts of the, the camera component, neither one of these will scrape against that ribbon cable. When I designed uh, these systems, we left a, uh, a hole right here basically. So you can take a screwdriver and you can loosen it. So this is Cressmer's design. There's a really cool little wedge kind of in the bottom of this. And as the wedge gets pulled up, it uh, contacts this bolt and it pulls that up. Kind of the whole carriage rises up into this kind of space. And this wedge, as it moves up due to the tightening of this bolt, it actually flexes this uh, out. And So this fits perfectly inside a three inch pipe. And then as I twist this up, it tightens it and allows the entire uh, system to get uh, really well mounted inside that pipe. Keep loosening it up a bit and then I'm just gonna briefly whack the back of the screwdriver and that pops it down. I'm gonna grab the top of this board, I'm gonna wiggle it a little bit and I pull it up. This is a desiccant, this is a silica gel packet that I get, and it basically has these little indicator balls in there. So when it's contacted moisture, if it's got a little too wet, these will turn green. And this not only tells me that I might have a little bit of leak, but it keeps everything nice and dry. Here's my, my LED system, and you can see it's wired down into here. Okay, I, it's a little difficult to do, so I'm actually gonna slide the camera back in and that allows me to get even more wire so I can pull it out and easily pop this off. So I use these, I grab this head, and then I try and jam it kind of down in that pocket I've already formed. You might see at the very bottom, there's enough of a little pocket that I can tuck that wire down in there. So the first thing I do is I take a napkin 
and I clean off the o-ring just so I don't get any residue on myself. In order to remove this camera system, I have the ribbon cable over here. I just wanna take these a couple little screws right here. So now that that's loosened, I just grab the camera, and as I pull it out, along comes the entire ribbon cable. And this base mount is the same base mount that I use for these. So the camera and the LEDs will use the same base mount. So I kind of, I'll loosen this a little bit more, and then I'll, I'll push it down. So when this is mounted and ready for deployment, it's very, very difficult to actually screw these in and bolt them while it's like in a pipe. So I get this all ready and I mount this inside the camera tube. I use these small screws to actually just screw this in place. So, so I have these smart chargers. One will charge each battery and there's two battery packs. So you wire one on top, positive, negative. You'll take this male receptacle, the male Molex, you just kind of pop it up like this and you'll just connect the other Molex side. From time to time, these wires will actually pop out, like right here, out the back of this Molex connector. So to keep those all in there, I get a small flathead screwdriver and I push in the backs of the wires to make sure that it's actually connected with each battery pack. So now I just go up the row and I would unwrap this one and I'd unwrap this one and I would charge each of these systems with another smart charger setup. So one here and one at the very end. All these get plugged in, they get left overnight, and then it should be fully charged. Uh, I think within about 10 hours is what I was running on. This light will turn green when it's fully charged and it'll be red while it's charging. And these all run on a low cycle, so 0.9 amps instead of 1.8 amps. So both of those should be set on that. I've cleaned these off using Tim wipes. So here's my little O-ring here. I've gone around and I've cleaned it. If I come in here and I just gently go around without damaging it, I can pop my O-ring out. And I can take this, uh, these little Tim wipes and I can just kind of clean this off. Now I can take more of this Dow Corning uh, vacuum grease and I can smear it on here. So I'll just kind of set this on a little, little tissue here to keep nice and clean. So I've gone around now and there's a nice fine layer on that o-ring. It sits nicely in there. And now I'm ready for basically my cover. These are both plexiglass cut from the same material. One, however, has a Blue Robotics high pressure switch. So I can twist this open and I can take it down to depth. And then when I'm ready, I can twist this shut and it uh, enables the system to start. So there's actually a very small little switch. You'll see right there, there's two little holes in a female connector that enables these pins from either this or from a Blue Robotics switch to go into that two pin connector. And that basically, when this shuts, it connects the circuit. I just pop it in like that, very straightforward, twist it. Once it gets to about here, I take the actual plexiglass and I just push it up against the O-ring. But now I can twist this nice and tight. And then you should be able to see that O-ring sits really nicely on the plexiglass. This is our glass piece. 
I started off by cutting small sections that I could easily break off. So I, I sketched the glass once using a wax pen or wax pencil. Once I had my initial cutting spots, I took the Dremel, my diamond head, head Dremel, and I just very lightly scored it around in a circle. Then I flipped over the glass plate to the other side. I scored it a few times on that side as well. Every about a half inch or inch, all the way around the edge of this glass plate, I cut little lines. And these lines I cut on both sides of the plate. And this allowed me to effectively take a little tiny bit of pressure and break these little chunks off. After a while, it started taking shape and I just kind of shaved these all down. After I was done with this, I put it on a belt sander and I just kind of smooth the edges on a really fine grit uh, just to get rid of any sharp glass that might cut myself later. And that effectively is how I cut quarter inch glass pane into just this very small circle.